from the Service Electric Studio, it's the Mike Zambelli Show. We've been talking about that Muhlenberg uh, College volleyball team. They are getting ready. They've completed the regular season in the Centennial Conference and are now prepping for their conference championship. They'll be the third seed. They are our guest on this week's show. Head coach Alexa Keckler, Rebecca Shear, and Shannon Hubert. But first, here is this week's edition of I've Got News. Well, we're going to start with baseball. Get right to it. Gabe Kapler is a bold choice to be the 54th manager in the Phillies history. The team made Kapler's hiring official Monday afternoon in a news release touting his leadership, progressive thinking, and ability to relate to young players. But Kapler's 42 is an unconventional choice, at least by Philly standards. He has limited managerial and coaching experience, and he is the first manager the organization has uh, hired uh, without Philly's ties, dating back to Terry Francona in 1996. He's also uh, pretty big into eating right. At least we'll know the Phillies will be eating correctly, at least on his terms. Well, the much-anticipated uh, second season to Stranger Things debuted on Netflix this past weekend. And it didn't disappoint. Fans and critics alike are in awe over the much larger world built in this season and the depth of the story, the adventures of the 11 and the gang span of nine episodes rather than eight. So you'll want to make sure you have Service Electric's high-speed internet for uninterrupted binge-watching of this th thrilling sequel. The girls are going to have to help me out with that one when we return. The Moravian College women's soccer team posted a 2-0 win over visiting Juniata in Landmark Conference action on senior day at John McAvick Field and the Greyhounds remained in the mix for the Landmark Conference Tournament. Senior Jessica Lawton earned the victory in the goal on senior day as they played the first half of the contest. Sophomore Jamie Daly saw action during the second half. Congratulations and we wish them good luck as well. We are going to step aside. Our topic tonight is Muhlenberg College Volleyball. They prep for the Centennial Conference playoffs when we return. Stay with us. Twenty four and five was the final line during the regular season. All five losses by this Muhlenberg team to nationally ranked or regionally ranked team. They are our guests this week. Welcome in head coach Alexa Keckler, Rebecca Shear and Shannon Hubert. Ladies, uh, good day to all three of you. Hi, thanks. Thank you. I'm going to get right to the players. Can you help me out with that uh, Stranger Things? Uh, Rebecca, do you, you know about this Stranger <laughs> Thing? What was that all about that I just read there? Well, um, there's a character named Eleven who has supernatural powers and basically it's a crew of young individuals who help her. Um, so you know all yeah, about this. I, I know a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, very. Rebecca or Shannon, same thing. You're familiar with uh, this? My whole team is trying to get me into it, but I just, like, I can't get into it. I don't know why. <laughs> I heard it's really good, though. That's certainly good stuff. Coach, congratulations. What a great year again. Uh, Thank you. Tournament, what, four out of the last five years? Yes, you're sir. in your eighth year. Um, you're going to be the number three seed. Give us a little preview of your matchup with Swarthmore. Yeah, so we'll be about 10 days out from having played them in the regular season. Mm -hmm. So it uh, should be an interesting um, matchup. I think, you know, being able to play them in such a short, twice in, you know, such a short amount of time mm -hmm. should help us a, a little bit in our preparation. Um, having seen them recently will help us with, you know, what things we can do to change the outcome of that match. And sure. so, um, although not as competitive as we had hoped to be the first time around, I think uh, we kind of have things established a little bit more now and mm -hmm. over the next few days, We'll, we'll prepare as best we can to face them on Where's Saturday. with the Centennial Conference? Johns Hopkins won nationally ranked. Swarthmore yourself uh, gained a, a program best fifth ranking. What is it about the Centennial Conference and girls basketball? Pretty good stuff. Or volleyball, excuse me. Yeah, so I would say for sure our, our, the Centennial Conference is definitely one of the most competitive in, in the area, in the region, and uh, we certainly... Um, you know, year to year, we just kind of bang up on each other, mm -hmm. and it, it, it certainly makes for playoff time to be very, um, very hectic and crazy because you never know quite who's gonna who's gonna make the cut and in what place they're gonna be in. And you know, even last year there was a three-way tie. This year, I believe that there was um, there, there was a potential of a four-way sure, tie. So sure. it's a, it's extremely competitive, which also makes it a lot of fun. 
Muhlenberg twice a runner-up in this tournament. They'll look for the program's first ever Centennial Conference Championship getting underway again on Saturday. Rebecca, your thoughts on uh, preparing for the playoffs and what makes playoff volleyball different than what you go through in a regular season? Well, I think that playoffs is a very mental game. It's a little bit more challenging because we know we've faced these opponents before and we have to go in there knowing that there's a possibility of um, having to play a little bit higher because this competition, everyone's going to come back and want to bring revenge if they lost. Yeah, freshman uh, from East uh, Rockaway, New York, uh, Lynnbrook High School. How'd you find your way to Muhlenberg College in Allentown's West End? You know, coach was very, very consistent and very uh, persuasive. persuasive when uh, <laughs> recruiting. So I also just fell in love with the school and love the volleyball program. Yeah, three-year varsity volleyball player there, twice as track, your team captain. Uh, uh, what's your major and what, do you, what are your future plans? Well, I'm a neuroscience major now, and I'm only a freshman, so I haven't thought that far what into the future. <laughs> It'll yeah. be here before you know it, though. I, I'm <laughs> sure, though, everybody's telling you that, right? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. What, uh, uh, Shannon, uh, your thoughts on uh, heading to the postseason as well. Now, you're, this is old hat for you now. This is how many times for you personally into the playoffs? This is um, our second year. Second year. Yeah, so last year it was at Hopkins, and then we're going back to Hopkins again this year. Um, I think it was good that we played Hopkins at Hopkins because it's a much different vibe in their stadium than it is in Memorial Hall. Um, I just think we need to keep practicing hard and I think it should go our way. We've been working so hard this season and especially with a young team, I think it was hard to play them the first time mm -hmm. um, and I think we got in our own heads. So I think knowing how we played them last time will help us with playing them on Saturday. Ram uh, Sunday. Ramapo High School, for you, how'd you find your way to uh, West End of Allentown? <laughs> um, so my sister played at Franklin and Marshall. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I saw that. Um, and my dad <laughs> played football at Moravian. Oh. So, so you didn't want to go to either one, or Muhlenberg <laughs> was the happy medium there? Or? <laughs> um, actually, Muhlenberg was the first school I visited, and once I came here, I, I knew I was going to go to Muhlenberg. What was it about Muhlenberg that attracted you? What is it that you liked? Um, I love the campus, and I love the coach, and once I met the team, it was kind of, well, at least for me, like a done deal. I knew I wanted to come here, mm -hmm. and my club coach's daughter actually played at Muhlenberg. So there was a lot of mutual connections with yeah. Muhlenberg for me. Coach, talk about selling Muhlenberg College. What's the selling point for Muhlenberg when you, you I mean, obviously you don't give scholarships. It's Division Three volleyball. What is your selling point for Muhlenberg, and how do you attract them to Allentown? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think Shannon definitely hit the nail on the head with the, the campus. It's a, a beautiful campus. Um, the the layout, the, the buildings, um, the amenities. Um, facilities the are facilities are just done a great job. Absolutely, right? are just right. awesome. And so, you know, I think that's one thing, getting them on the campus. You know, once I can get them on the campus, I don't think I've ever had someone visit and just be like, I, this is a, a terrible campus. I mean, everyone just really loves it and embraces it. Um, there is definitely a sense of, you know, people will go above and beyond for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think mm -hmm. when, you know, even appealing to the parents when you're talking to recruit and, and letting them know that there's a lot of people that are here to, that, that's going to care for your child and that's going to help them um, be successful and make the most out of their experience I think is really important but also you know we we are you know although division three you know we do give um, great merit packages and strong mm -hmm. um, competitive financial aid packages academics are awesome. and so the academics are a huge selling sure, point for sure, sure. and sure. Um, our career center does an amazing job with our athletes and our students in general so I just think from a preparation standpoint you know we just try to sell this is this is a place that you can spend four years that will prepare you for the next 40 and and it's it's a I think you look at your roster and it bodes for what you're saying. I mean, you have uh, national or geographic, uh, I mean, Minnesota, I believe Florida, California. I mean, you have a really diverse uh, roster. How do you get these student athletes to come and what is your recruiting network that allows you to get out? I'm sure Muhlenberg is not giving you a big uh, pocketbook <laughs> there for all this recruiting. How do you attract them all? Right, right. Um, so, yeah, so I think some of it comes down to some players just, you know, have heard of Muhlenberg, maybe through a guidance counselor and mm -hmm. they'll reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it, I think, uh, in the last few years has just been an expansion of our recruiting um, area. And so, you know, I've been traveling to Colorado to some qualifiers out there to Florida for some qualifiers. So those events help you, you bring a lot of your potential yes. athletes So together. just to be able to see them and be, meet them in person, you know, when they're finished playing and um, reaching out to now, you know, people that I've met in that area to say, 
you know, I'm going to be recruiting there. Who who is it that I should be looking at? What are some strong academic kids mm -hmm. that are great volleyball players that are going to help us, you know, not only sustain where we are, but help us to continue to get stronger and better. Rebecca, you're coming in as a freshman. How do you mesh then with all these girls who for, who are from different parts of the country? And what are the advantages to that as a team? You know, um, coming into the season, I was a little bit intimidated because the team is filled with so much talent. And um, immediately when I met all the girls, all the captains were extremely welcoming. Shannon here, like, definitely helped me adjust to the community. And I think having players from all over the country definitely helps bring different aspects to the game that I appreciated. Shannon, what are some of the things you can do as the upperclassmen, realizing what, you know, Rebecca's going to go through as a freshman coming into the program? We try hard, um, especially in the beginning of the season, to really have a lot of like team bonding things. Mm -hmm. Since the rest of us, like we're all really good friends, we hang out almost, every, I mean, every, literally every single day, um, and eat most of our meals together too. Mm -hmm. So we just try to get them included in that. So we all feel like like a mini like a mini family since everyone's from so far over, far, like all over the nation mm -hmm. um, and a bunch of the girls in the team end up going to holidays with people who live closer like I had um, one of our friends Brenna come to Easter with me my freshman year because she couldn't fly home for the um, holiday. Alexa do you pay attention to that I mean that's obviously because you have young ladies who are coming and being away from home for the first time is that one of your first steps with incoming freshmen? Yeah, I think it's important to kind of keep tabs on them initially, make sure they're adjusting well, um, helping them, whether it's, you know, getting from the airport to the campus awesome. um, or, you know, just seeing, hey, we're going to have a big break. Are you guys going to be leaving? Are you going to mm -hmm. stay? You know, so um, I definitely think that it's it's been pretty cool having players from all over the country um, come to Muhlenberg and play for us. But I also think that it's it's helpful to have them really understand what each other's going through. So there's not just that one kid that's, you know, I don't get to see my family and everyone else does all the time. You know, I think it's cool that they're all experience it in different ways. And I, I have to say, you know, our, our parent following and our support of these kids, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. Sure. And we have sure. such great kids. And I think that's attributed to the fact that they have wonderful parents who make the trip, who m make the effort that's to awesome. be a part of their lives and be a part of this experience. And so that makes it a lot easier for me. It's awesome. For sure. The college experiences we're learning here is a lot more than just going to classes and learning. Obviously, that's what they're there, all there for, but it goes well beyond there. Uh, husband Daryl is a head basketball coach at Drew. You have three daughters and a young son. What's it like in your family? <laughs> huh? It's a zoo. <laughs> a lot of it's a zoo. Yeah, zoo yeah. There's, um, you know, when you hear the, the saying, it takes a village to raise a family, like, it is definitely true. I mean, you know, we have an overlap of at least three weeks in our season. Could be more. Hopefully, you know, we win this weekend. You know, maybe it'll be a fourth week. So it's a lot of juggling and planning, you know, who's going to watch the kids, who's going to take them here. And, um, but it's also pretty awesome that understand each other's jobs and what it takes to be successful in them. So there are late nights of watching film. There are weekends where we're recruiting and we're away from one another. And um, and our kids have just grown up in a gym, so they love it. And my oldest is, is about to turn 12, and she knows every player and who we're playing and, you know, how we can – she thinks she knows how we can win <laughs> and why did I sub this person and why are we doing this. So mm -hmm. it's just cool to kind of be able to talk about that in an environment. And, um, you know, my husband's extremely supportive – for to me when I'm in season and you know I try to return that same support when he's in season and so it's a lot of juggling but it's it's awesome and I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything it's pretty neat you're from Hagerstown uh, in uh, Tennessee you went to junior college there Trevecca Nazarene University in Nashville Tennessee what a journey you've been on also head coach at uh, Gettysburg where you won a centennial conference championship well, how how did you get the bug in volleyball how did you you were an all-american in junior college and had a great career yourself how did you get the bug how'd you get attracted to this sport yeah so well um coaching in general my dad's a longtime basketball coach pretty successful in <laughs> um in the state of maryland and so i grew up in a gym you know since i was crawling um and so that definitely i never thought i would be a coach mm -hmm. um but after i graduated college um you know i just i i missed it so much that i started with high school and club and then you know was set to to be an assistant at gettysburg and just you know, right place, right time at a great, mm -hmm. you know, institution that allowed me the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, take the head position. And um, from there, you know, my husband was also the assistant there. And so then he took the head journey. Yeah, yeah head job journey. at Drew. So, I mean, I just, I've loved being competitive. It's just 
I think part of who I am. So, so your, your yeah, kids, so know, you know exactly what your kids are going through, being there at practice all yeah, the time. That yeah, is pretty it's interesting. A, it is. Yeah, it one is. of the bonding things that this program has come together with, and they talked about it when we return tonight. We're going to talk about the rally for Reagan, a heart-touching story. They have raised over seven thousand dollars for a teammate's uh, relative who is currently down at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. Stay with us. And our short being with this show, we have been able to tell some very uh, touching and heartwarming stories of generosity and teamwork and uh, doing for others uh, who might be less fortunate than ourselves. And this Muhlenberg volleyball team falls into that category. Rally for Reagan, a young uh, girl who is uh, just three years old, a teammate to these young ladies here, and uh, currently uh, in uh, CHOPS, which is the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, and uh, in a real fight right now with cancer. Ladies, uh, Rebecca, let me start with you. You're a freshman, you come in, and you get involved in this, but this thing is really blind blossomed into more than you thought. You set a goal of 7,000 and you have already uh, raised more than that. Yeah, well, um, obviously it's, um, it's wonderful to come in and see such camaraderie among the team and being willing to donate so much time and energy to help, the, um, help this teammate um, mm -hmm. in the situation. And I think it was just an amazing experience to be a part of. Shannon, you've been able to grow it outside the volleyball program as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was heartbreaking when we found out about our teammate's cousin because I saw her last year and she was healthy and like running around. And then when we found out, it was really like heartbreaking and just, I can't believe everything that's happened. But mm -hmm. what are the other programs over? It was field hockey and I believe the soccer program also oh, yeah. jumped so, on board. Um, the girls soccer, um, boys soccer, and field hockey all helped out with Rally for Reagan. Um, and they were already planning on raising money for pediatric cancer that weekend. Um, and they actually wore the shirts for their game, which was really, really nice. Yeah, you can still donate, right? You can still get online and still donate. Is that correct? So if you're watching us here and want to help these young ladies out, Alexa, that's got to make a head coach awful awful proud and that's what's neat about teams uh, in, in in this day and age when a teammate needs a little help you know your 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 teammates are there for you yeah it's I mean we definitely are more than just a team I mean we are definitely a, a family and um, we were we were all excited about we were going to do a dig, big dig pink event and mm -hmm. um, we found out about um, you know Reagan and it literally within seconds you know our captains and, and I decided that this is where we needed to spend our time and our focus and um, being able to put this together and help this family out. I mean, the, the hours that they'll spend Phenomenal. away from their job Phenomenal. and from their other kids, it was just, it was awesome to just, you know, it was the right thing to do. And it was really cool to see how the girls just, you know, rallied around for sure. it and got the shirts and, and uh, wristbands and sold them. And, you know, we were able to help the family a little bit with, you know, some gas cards so they could, you know, get to and from and all the stuff they're spending. And yep. then to see how many people were just so generous and, and donating online. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's really great. Turning, a, turning adversity into a positive for these young ladies, for sure. That's what it's all about uh, in our society. All right, let's get back to business here. You're coming up now on, on the playoffs. Uh, you've been there for the last five years, twice a runner-up. Give us a sense on, you know, the sport of volleyball. What kind of adjustments can you make as a coach heading into the tournament that maybe can help you steal a match, steal a couple of points here or there? Yes, yeah, so I think it, it comes down to a lot of film watching, um, trying to pick up on tendencies um, for our blockers to be able to maybe do a little bit better job reading the setter, where they're going to distribute the ball. You're telling um, me about analytics, right? That's what that's pretty much, we're going. <laughs> pretty much we're going that way, you know, uh, you know, tendencies and, and you know, matchups, how we can start in our rotations, what defenses might be a little bit mm -hmm. more effective, um, yeah, yeah. where we might be able to score a little bit more often um, on their side of the net. So, yeah, there, yeah there's there's certainly some some tactics behind it and some, some analytics for sure. That's pretty Pretty cool. Rebecca, you've made two starts as a freshman. You've played in, uh, I believe, every game, 27 of them right now. Your thoughts on the postseason? This will be your first as a freshman. Um, well, going into the season, the playoffs, obviously, we know that there's going to be some tough competition out there, but our team puts in so much work during practice that I know that we're going to be able to come through and hopefully pull out a win. Shannon, same, uh, same question to you. Yeah, I think we just need to play our game, um, and I think we should. It would be a tough fight, 
but I think we should win, yeah. I know one of the things that happens uh, for both you players, and Shannon, I'll stay with you. When you have a prospective recruit come to Muhlenberg, what do you tell them about that maybe I wouldn't know? I'm coming in now, and I'm thinking about coming to Muhlenberg. What do you tell them about West Allentown and what's going on there, and in particular within the volleyball program? Um, well, just starting with the school first, definitely we have to talk about the dining hall. We probably take them to the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is beautiful. I have um, been in it. It yeah, is beautiful. It's, I think it's top 15 in the nation. <laughs> so we take them to the dining hall immediately because that's where we spend the majority of our time when we're not in the gym. Um, and then we also just talk about how much time we spend together and how much time coach puts into our lives, like our personal lives outside of volleyball. And it's just such a family, like on our team. Coach having a family like that, knowing that her husband is a basketball coach, is that an attraction uh, when you when you decide to come to school? Coach has that kind of an, uh, of an impact? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think she really works hard if someone's dealing with an issue. Like, I know Coach for multiple times is, like, the, one of the first people, person that I go to um, mm -hmm. and has really helped me through some tough times in the past few years. Coach, I mentioned you have won a championship in the Centennial Conference. That was at Susquehanna. Can you draw any parallels between this current team and that championship team? Are there similarities? Yeah, you know, I actually think that there are. So when, when uh, we won at Gettysburg, we had a pretty a pretty gritty setter, um, and I would definitely say that, that Shannon kind of hits that with the, the, the grittiness. Um, we also had some, some pretty tough um, defenders at that point, so um, I think, you know, our freshmen are young, um, but we do have a core group of, of freshmen that um, defensively can really pick things up, so I feel like if their game continues to improve and they're really on, um, we have excellent firepower, so I mean, we've, we've got a lot offensively, of... You offensively, you can score. We've, we've got mm -hmm. a lot of, of kids that can just find the floor, so as long as they're hitting the the right spots and um, you know defensively we, we we stay on the mark I mean I, I really do believe that we have uh, a great outlook for Saturday um, to take on Swarthmore and you know redeem that loss. Swarthmore the number two seed Franklin and Marshall the four and number five McDaniel will be playing in a preliminary round game that'll take place on Wednesday the winner of that one then will move on and take on number one Johns Hopkins who has been a perennial power in the Centennial Conference and uh, that's a look at the uh, volleyball coach have they lived up to your expectations this year attained a number five ranking I know the tournament's important but is this team uh, met your expectations absolutely you know it's it's um you know, for me as a coach, I think over the last couple of years, it's it's not been about you know making the tournament. I think we all want to make the tournament. You know, so it's it's more about growing as players, um, getting better, putting in the work. Um, you know, there's there is such a, a marginal difference between the best and you know the next best. So it's it's trying to kind of capitalize on those little things, and mm -hmm. um, they have done an amazing job. I mean, we have no seniors, um, so we're you know no seniors on we this have year's no team. seniors on this team, and you know it's been awesome to see the juniors kind of take wow. control of that and. Um, own it and and just mm -hmm. you know I mean they they're they're not worried about the next day they're just they're just playing you know and, mm -hmm. and having fun and um, so yeah I mean I you never know what to expect when you go in the no, season there's so right. many variables sure. you know injuries sickness sure. um, you know who who other teams get so mm -hmm. you know it's really just we have to do what we can control and you know continue to work hard support one another and and see where that takes us and I think they've done a really great job of doing that this year and mm -hmm. I think that's why we've been successful yeah that's pretty cool uh, Rebecca yeah uh, your first year there uh, improving uh, your your thoughts uh, once again at being at Muhlenberg and uh, heading into the postseason it, is it what you expected when you signed on to come to Allentown definitely it is um, as I said earlier the college game is definitely a lot more mental mm -hmm. so what are the adjustments you had to make as a young player coming in what's the biggest adjustment not just volleyball wise but academically as well well, definitely it's a lot more difficult academically, but I think the hardest adjustment was just being able to go on the court and know that I'm always going to give my all. Like in practice, coach always emphasizes giving 100% versus 99% and how that 1% can change from winning a championship to having a losing season. Shannon, happy with your choice to be at Million. A junior, you'll still have another year. Again, uh, very, very exciting looking forward without a senior on this team here. But yeah. pleased with your decision, and if so, why? Oh, I'm definitely pleased with uh, my decision to come to Muhlenberg. It's just like such a great experience with in the classroom, um, with my friends on the team, outside the team. Mm -hmm. There's also just a great like camaraderie between all the other sports. We all support each other, and we definitely saw that with Rally for Reagan.
Can't always be, you know, thinking about wins and losses. Who's the one on the team that keeps things light? Who's, who keeps it loose <laughs> in the locker room? Or are there a number of them? Um, there's definitely a few. Um, Laura always keeps things light. She always has such a positive influence. Um, also, Kelly and Brenna are always making jokes. Same with Steph. Um, I don't know. It's really fun to go to practice. A couple of them, huh? Yeah. A couple of them. <laughs> that always makes it good. Coach, we're getting low on time here, but quickly. Volleyball in the Lehigh Valley, East Penn Conference, Colonial League. Terrific, terrific high school volleyball here uh, in the Lehigh Valley. How much of it do you get a chance to see? Yeah, so um, I... I I'd like to say I get to go out every night. Unfortunately, not I don't, easy, I don't, it's right? not easy to right. be able to do that. Right. Um, but I've been able to get out um, a couple of matches this year and, and see, uh, you know, Emmaus, Becca, uh, Nazareth. Um, good teams. You know, yeah, abs absolutely. Um, there's, there's, I mean, there's just phenomenal volleyball in the Lehigh Valley, both women's side and, and the men's sport growing. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just, it, it's awesome to be in an area where volleyball is really embraced and, and appreciated. And I mean, pretty much every night of the week, you could go somewhere and catch a, catch sure. a match or play in a league or you know do something like that so it's it's a it's a great recruiting ground for sure well and you guys add to it as well Moravian over there they've qualified for the landmark conference playoff absolutely. the sales as a great program there and you guys as well add to the scenery as well some good stuff absolutely a little different absolutely. than the volleyball played in the backyard at the clam bags, right yeah for sure for <laughs> sure <laughs> coach want to thank you for taking the time Rebecca Shear, Shannon Hubert and Alexa Keckler wish you well in the tournament coming up over the weekend Thanks thank so you much. so much also want to thank the ladies this is the first gift I've received so <laughs> Muhlenberg Volleyball so they are on the board as well they'll take on Swarthmore on Saturday if they win the championship will be Sunday 1 o'clock and you can watch it on the Centennial Conference digital network you can stream it there hope you enjoyed tonight's show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you here this evening for all of us here at TV2 Sports I'm Mike Zambelli enjoy the remainder of your night